In this series, you'll be presented with multiple choice ear training questions that will help you better understand and hear the effect of different mixing tools. This video's tool is compression and today's focus is on gain reduction. So how well do you hear compression? Do you think you can tell when it's being overused or used at all? Let's find out. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. Compression is one of the most commonly used tools in mixing. Compression reduces the dynamic range of a signal by reducing the intensity of peaks above a threshold. The result is a performance that's much more dynamically consistent than before. The amount of gain that a compressor removes is called gain reduction or peak reduction. A small amount of gain reduction can even out a few rogue peaks that are much louder than the average recorded level. And as more gain reduction is applied, this effect is much more pronounced as the natural dynamic of the performance is squashed into a flatlined sausage of dynamic conformity. By recognizing the sound and intensity of gain reduction, you will be able to better apply the right amount of compression for each instrument or sound. For this test, we'll be using the Waves CLA-2A because it's simple, it's only got two knobs. To keep it simple and fair, you'll have the same four choices for each question. The goal here is to train our ears to better hear the differences in dynamics. So let's do a quick warm up. Can you hear the sound get flatter? The dynamics become more contained, and in this example, the compressor was applying up to 10 dB of gain reduction. Okay, let's try another one. Overall, not much is happening. There's only about 2 dB of gain reduction happening at any time, which means that we're maintaining the natural dynamic of the performance. In this example, a lot of the dynamics have been smoothed right out. The whole perspective sounds much flatter and the piano has around 10 dB of gain reduction going on. Thank you. 
So this bass riff decays in the dry signal, whereas with compression, each note is roughly the same volume. Now the first note, which is also the loudest, sounds much more aggressive as the compressor slams down on it. So this bass has been absolutely squashed with 20 dB of gain reduction. The peaks are contained and it makes the single note sound more confident, but the performance still sounds pretty natural. The first time I went through this test, I actually guessed 5 dB, but it is indeed 10 dB of gain reduction. Often very dynamic instruments can be supported in the mix with compression. So don't be afraid to experiment and really dig in with the compressor. So very light compression on this one, only minus five dB to keep the dynamics of the melody and the bass in check. This approach might be preferable for a solo piano performance, but heavier compression may be required if you want the sustain of the notes to cut through the mix. Not enough compression to even out this performance. As we discussed in the last bass example, this riff decays and it gets quieter. And in this example, we don't have enough gain reduction happening to compensate for that drop in volume. We fixed that last time with 20 dB of gain reduction, but in this example, there's only five. So how did you do? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing for fresh weekly content. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.